Welcome back to Hindsight Hacking, everybody. I love you. This is incredible. Zoom is listening <laughs> so and watching. Thank you guys for having me. Zoom, if you're listening, it was our <laughs> idea. <laughs> Welcome back to Hindsight Hacking, everybody. And today's guest, the one, the only, Mr. Drew Burks. Now, if you haven't heard of Drew, you're missing out because he has already helped three different coaches build seven plus figure businesses online. And He's sold over 10,000 courses online. So we're not going to spend a lot of time with me talking. We're going to actually let Drew talk, tell his story, tell us how he achieved that fun little award uh, for anybody that's watching the Two Comic Club Award from ClickFunnels. Uh, and uh, give us a little feedback. Give us a little update. What's going on, Drew? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here and uh, looking forward to getting to know you here. Hey, well, welcome. I appreciate that uh, amazing intro. I should possibly just jump off here right now before I mess it up. But uh, no, it's, and man, I'm stoked to be here. It's awesome. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, Drew, we're super excited to have you. And just like Corey said, like, let's just get to it. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I will tell you. Um, I'll give you a little backstory. So first and foremost, I am an entrepreneur. I've always been one, but time freedom is the most important thing to me. Like I realize money is not as important as I once thought it to be. Right. I'm uh, I'm a low key, low maintenance guy. I've realized that it, all the things that I thought I wanted on the vision board, it just paled in comparison to being able to be at home with my wife and kids and, and being a, at home present dad. And so that's what drives every decision is how much time it's going to take me to execute on that. But, you know, it was 2014. So to date myself here, the white beard, um, but I was running Infusionsoft campaign. So if anyone knows Infusionsoft, it's called Keep Now. It's an email marketing and automation CRM system. And that's what it was doing for small businesses and, and you know, brick and mortar type businesses. Uh, and I was running that. And 2014, I had a couple of guys I'd known previously call me and said, hey, we have a coach as a client. We're running all of her paid ads. She's doing an in-studio event. Can you run the automation, the back end? She has Infusionsoft and no one knows what they're doing. So real long story short, I agreed to do it. I went there the day of the event, and I got to tell you, still to this day, 2021, most impressive event I've ever been to. It was like an Oprah Winfrey studio. I mean, I, I walked in, she had rented a television crew. She had like stadium seating with guests, the, the, the stage with the sofas and the guests coming, sitting on the sofa and talking. And it was, you know, it was incredible. During the day, people were calling in. And at the end of that, I asked her, I said, man, this was so impressive, amazing, but what'd you make today? She's like, well, we did $75,000. And I got to tell, I was blown away. But then I asked the million dollar question, well, how much did it cost you <laughs> to do it? And she's like, well, it cost us about 55,000. And so, I mean, listen, it was still 20, 25 grand she had made that day, which was impressive to me. I'd never done that kind of money. But I said to her, hey, why don't we do a webinar? It's way more affordable to do it. I'll help you craft it and script it and I'll run all the automation and Joe and Josh can do the ads. And it took me about 30 days to persuade her. She wasn't really sure what a webinar was at that time. She'd never done one. She had never even been on one. So we put one together. We spent $6,800 in ads and we did $220,000 in sales over 10 days. Whoa. And that was the beginning of my quote unquote internet marketing career. Because really? she was like, I love you. This is incredible. We made way more without having to plan this, you know, studio thing. And so that just changed the trajectory of my life. And we went on in that particular funnel. That was my first of the multi seven figure projects. We actually did 3.6 million in the next 22 months with one ugly funnel, one really good webinar and one offer. And that was it. Wow. Nice. That's so, how so how did that being the early part of the, of, of the journey, like, how did you really understand and know how to write the webinar? How did you, what process did you learn? And, and how did you know it was going to work for her and, and all that? Well, I had no idea it was going to work, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew uh, because I've been like pursuing online marketing since 2008, 2008. And, you know, so I'd follow people like Frank Kern and, Mike Phil same and all the original kind of the OG people in the space. And so I knew it was possible and I had spent a ton of money and time learning this stuff. So 
I knew it was possible. I didn't know how well we were going to do, but I knew that Sonia was her name. I knew she was very polished. I knew she was good at what she did. I knew there was an audience. I mean, she had just done this studio event with people all day calling in. So I knew the pieces were there. I just didn't know how well it was going to work. And, and once it did work, you know, she was like, Hey, you're my new best friend. Right. Let's partner up. And so, you know, I was, uh, I was super grateful to her because it was her idea to partner after that. And we went from a consultant basis fee base to 50% profit share in that deal for 22 months. And, you know, it changed my life at that point, gave me a business model that I could go and, and enroll other experts into. And I've just continued to do that ever since with, with other experts. Some have been almost as successful as she, she's probably the most successful. Um, and some have been, you know, successful and some have not been so successful. And I, I've realized there's some characteristics between the seven figure people and then everyone else. There, there's the magic right there. It's, it's funny because we, uh, we had a client that we were helping with, with her summit. It was her very first summit. Never ran ads, never had a funnel. And she's like, I'm going to make a million dollars. I was like, nope, you're not. So relax. <laughs> like, let's, let's temper that down. Let's that understand awesome. what you're going to do uh, and, and move forward. How do, how do you, you know, you, you said right there, there's some, some pieces and parts to the, the seven figure persona, if you will, mm -hmm. where, where did you come up with that? Or is it just the people you've worked with that, Hey, these are, this is what's successful. And you started keeping track of here's their personality. Is that what you're kind of talking about or their offer or. Yeah, because after, well, not after, but during that time with Sonia and, and that team, and we were doing so well, you know, we, my two business partners and I, we got a little, you know, full of ourselves and we thought, well, we did this once we could, we could do this over and over. And so we started taking on people and we were like, don't pay us any money. We'll just take 50% of the profits. Right. We we're like, right. We don't want any retainer. That's crazy. Let's just get to a million dollars. And the first one didn't work. The second one didn't work. And after a bunch of these, it didn't work. And we're banging our head going, what's going on? We're doing the exact same thing, right? We're running the same type of ads. We had the same webinar, like what's not working. And that's when we started looking at the partners or the experts, like, we get it now. And, and the analogy that I think makes it pretty clear to everyone is it's like if you were going to look at the uh, Hollywood actors and actresses, right? There's the A-list actors, right? There's the Brad Pitt, the Joey Roberts, the Jim Carrey. They're the people who show up in character. And then there's a, the, the guy or girl who's working at IHOP right now. Right. And they're going to go read lines later, right? And they're reading them. That's the difference. And so when we do webinars with people, I have found that it's not me that's going to make them a million dollars. It's, are they going to take it serious? Like it's a million dollar business. Are they going to practice the script over and over and over so that if you run into them at a coffee shop, they could go through the whole webinar from start to finish. You know, is, is that the type of person they are? And if so, then they stand a really good chance at being the successful ones. The other ones are just like, they're going to show up and read their slides as it's scrolling down or looking at their iPhone, trying to read their power. It's, it's going to be a long road for those people. Right. Yeah. I mean, you got to practice. And I mean, what anything we're doing, right? I don't care if it's a webinar. I don't care if it's, uh, you know, just trying to do a sales call, right? Like you're not going to be good if you don't practice. It's like you, if you want to grow and thrive, you've got to practice. But, and, and so you, you, went through the process, you found uh, some of that secret sauce. Um, and then, you know, where, where are you at now? Are you still building, are you building funnels for people? You're just, your bit company's building funnels and you're built and you're helping them with the webinar side, like walk us through kind of what the business is and uh, stuff that you're doing right now. Yeah. So my core kind of focus right now is helping coaches, experts, course creators really create their premium offer, their higher ticket offer. And then, showing them how to do that, create it, launch it, sell it in the first 30 days or less, and then showing them how to teach that premium offer through a group program or even one-to-one, -one, but then how to break that down and create the signature course from that. And then show them, teach them the numbers and the math. I also find it's incredible how many people I speak to every day that don't know their numbers, right? And, and I'm not talking about sophisticated numbers. I'm talking about two and two or four, right? right? Like how to... 
how to just track the basic numbers and understand if it's 10%, how to try to, to get it better. And so I, I teach them that. And then only after they have that and they have revenue coming in, then do I talk to them about doing webinars and things like that. Because I find if they don't have the offer dialed in, it's not converting, a webinar is not going to do anything except for perpetuate that, right? It's just, they're just going to be three months down the road with no more sales. And then they're going to be mad at me because they spent all this time on a webinar that didn't work. Right, right. Well, I think I think you, you made a good point right there. It's about... It's about setting expectations. You know, they have to understand that they have to have something that's converting before they can kind of scale that piece, right? Um, so when you're talking to people, and let's say there's there's a group that has this starting to grow and starting to convert, and they've practiced, um, what's kind of the next steps you do for people? How do you how do you get them to understand? I, I guess taking it serious is the wrong way to phrase it, but I'm going to use that. How do you get them to understand if they take it a little bit more serious, they're going to get a little bit more back in return? Uh, well, I don't know that I'm a, capable of getting them to take it any more serious, but what I like to do is I like to keep them focused on the numbers. So I use a framework that I developed a few years ago. It's very simple. I always caution people not to dismiss it because it is so simple. Um, but when I walk clients through it, typically I will hear something like this, like, and I, I thought it was too simple, but now I'm getting it. And, and so it looks like this. Step one is like, what's the strategy? And not the strategy to take over the world. I see a lot of gurus teaching this, like, here's the 14 funnels you need. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and I look at it like, you know, if you're going to run a marathon, you don't start by running 26.2 miles. You start by, you know, running to the mailbox and back. Right. And right. So I, I teach them what's the strategy to go A to B and then B to C. And then I teach them to get it built as quick as possible. So step one strategy, step two is get it built as quick as possible to let their ego and all the, the perfection out the window. It doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to be functional. And then to get it launched. And then step four is where every project I've ever touched has really started to make money. And that's optimized and scale. And it's this step four, I teach them to only look at the data. And in fact, all of my revenue and profit share partners, they hate it because every Tuesday when we have these calls, they always ask me this. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I tell them, look who at cares? The I tell them, who cares what I think? <laughs> right. Like, here's what the data tells us, right? And, right. and I always use this one example because uh, Ian, who's a good friend of mine, a partner, the guy I got this award with, he always say something like, I love this ad. I'll say, great, but it got three clicks. And he'll go, but I love it. We should use it. I'm like, well, you can make it your screensaver, but we can't <laughs> use it. Like, it's not working. Right? Like, and so I, I think one of my, my gifts is I have the ability to operate with zero emotion about it. Yeah. Right? It's just like, well, what the numbers say. And yeah. another example is people will call me and say, hey, can you audit my funnel? My offer's not working. I'll say, well, how do you know that? And so, well, we don't have any sales. And I go, well, show me the data. And it'll always be like, well, no one registered or no one opted in. You know, it's like, so you don't know. The offer can be perfect, but nobody's seen it. Or they've registered, but they didn't attend the webinar, right? Or they attended the webinar, but they left at 20 minutes and the offer doesn't show up until 45 minutes. Like, and that's why, I mean, people don't understand the numbers. They just go, well, it's not working. Right. It's like, well, Maybe, but we don't know what's not working. We got to figure that out first. Right. And, and that goes back to what's point A to point B, right? Like what's the data telling you from point A to point B before the offer at point C or wherever it's at. Right. So, and um, I found, you know, if anyone's out listening, like from a sales perspective, I found it's great for sales because, you know, once I see it, I always do it on a Google sheet too, like in a spreadsheet. Right. So I just show them the calculations and then it's not about me. I'm not telling them that, right? They're like, oh, yeah. like I can't do a million dollar webinar with my $10 ad budget. <laughs> Why not? Right. <laughs> now they, you know, they're like, oh, I, but you know, I heard someone tell me I could do $5 ads. I'm like, well, you can, but you're going to make, you know, $20, not, right. not a million. It's amazing right. how people don't think of it like that. Right. Um, all right. So I got, I was, you know, going through some of your stuff and I, I found your one of your Facebook groups or at least uh, one specific one and you've got the statement on this that I wanted to just read and then get your take on because I I love this and I know Ron and I kind of fell into this trap 
when we first launched our company. So uh, on the on the page, it says, I help transform self-employed entrepreneurs into seven-figure business owners. And I'd love for you to expand on that and, uh, you know, kind of maybe just, te- you know, talk about why that statement and talk about, you know, why uh, that's kind of your passion to help people, uh, you know, become that business owner. Yeah, yeah. You know, it actually goes back to 2010 when I bought the domain Escape the Job Life. And, you know, I, I think I mentioned earlier, time freedom is so important to me. So I, my friends love and hate this about me, but I'm always trying to persuade them to quit their jobs. And, and you know, and, and they always say to me, well, what do you even do for a living? Like you've never worked. And, you know, it's, it's a joke because I, I probably work more than they do, but I don't get in the car and go to right. a nine to five every day. So that was my original intent. But I learned that it's very difficult to convince people to quit their job, right? They get the certainty of the paycheck or they think it's certain anyway, they get their insurance. And so I gave up on that after a few years. And I realized that escape the job life, it's the same thing, but it's the self-employed entrepreneur that I'm looking for. They've already made the decision to quit the job. They've already experienced working from themselves and they have the freedom, but they're oftentimes stuck still trading their time for their money. So all their money is still one-to-one from a client. If the client decides not to pay them, they're back to square one. And I spent so many years that way in my own delusion, thinking I had a business and thinking that was free, but really I just had a bunch of bosses now. And so that's, that's what I've tried to escape from and help these people with is how do they go from that to, you know, creating a group offer or a higher ticket item offer not that that's the end goal, but that gives them the money they can use to then build out the signature course and subsidize the ad spend and get to, you know, these kind of quote unquote passive income streams. Right. No, I, I love the, the many bosses because it's so true. It's so true. And, and I call it with, I call it a little different. Choose who you want to work with, right? That's how, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how. We've, we've figured out through this process that there's certain people that we want around us and there's certain people we want to help expand their business. And there's certain people that we wish them all the best, but they should probably not work with us. And we're okay with that. Right. Right. But at the beginning, you're so afraid to, to like set those rules for yourself. And you're right. You all of a sudden just have multiple bosses. Right. And I remember telling Corey, I was like, okay, no more of this person, this this style of person. I don't want to deal with ever again that's my choice. We're done now. And it's been a much better ride. It's a blessing to discover that because I, I, you know, I will never forget the day when I was just sitting at my desk and my income was really great. And and I was working like three days a week and I had all these retainers coming in, but I was miserable. Mm -hmm. And I'd realized that I had liked all of these people at one point but I could not stand them anymore. Like just the thought of like, when I knew I was going to have to get on the call, I was sick at my stomach. I would just come up with a million reasons of why I should not get on that phone call. Yep. And I just was like, this is crazy. Like I, you know, it's, it goes against everything that I stand for as an entrepreneur. Like I was doing the lowest level jobs possible. I actually had a t-shirt made that says become the CEO, not the lowest paid employee, because I realized that's all I'd done. I just went from like not working a nine to five with a, in theory, a secure paycheck and benefits to having no secure income, no benefits and I'm about 12, twice as much. <laughs> 12 different people bossing me around. Yeah. And I, and I was like, this is crazy. Like I got to quit this. So yeah. that's what I stand for is to help people get out of that and get to this, you know, seven figure type of lifestyle. And, and it doesn't have to be seven figures. I mean, we all throw that number around, but it's whatever number is going to allow you to just experience life the way you want to, you know, like I don't have the Lamborghinis and the flashy stuff. I just, you know, like I'm wearing clothes that are 10 years old. And what's important to me is I get to wake up and go to bed with my kids every day and take them to school and coach their sports and volunteer at their, their camps. Like that's, that's what drives, drives me. So. Hundred percent. That is where you know Ron and I went. This whole direction was the start of that conversation of someone dictating the time that we had to put in. And uh, you know, I think before we started recording, I told you I was at my son's baseball game, and and uh, you know, every year I do that, and and he's got like three or four 
uh, Friday, you know, morning or afternoon games. Right. And that's like, I want that freedom to be able to go do that. And guess what? I have that freedom to go do that now. Like, you know, that's the way, the way it should be for anybody out there. But, uh, but Drew, let's, let's uh, circle back a little bit. The, when I did the introduction, I'm, I'm going to uh, relate this to the hindsight question today. Uh, you've sold 10,000 courses. Oh, that is over 10,000 courses. That is a big number. So in hindsight, you know, hindsight's 2020, uh, can, what can you share with all the people with the knowledge that you have about how you've sold courses, about how you've gone that route? Uh, what, what's the, the secret sauce, if you will? Because I know there's some people out there, like they're stuck trying to build the course. And they they are they have not followed the system to build it as fast as possible to get the data yet. Like they're stuck right there. Uh, or there's others that have built a course and sold one, which is almost worse than selling zero, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so what's what's in hindsight? What's that knowledge that you can share of how how someone can go from zero to a thousand sales on a course to then ten thousand plus, like where you're at? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and you know, I'm I'm grateful that the way you you know, shared what you did because a couple of things I would say to the, the biggest mistake I would see is building or creating it first, right? When it comes to a course is, you know, you always want to sell it first. And I know this rubs a lot of people the wrong way. I had a guy, you know, was on a sales call the other day, yelled at me, got mad, told his wife, there's no, no way they're doing business with me because someone had just sold them something that they didn't deliver it. And, you know, I mean, so Listen, it goes without saying, if you sell something, you need to deliver it. And if you don't deliver it, you need to refund the money, right? So let's just get the obvious out of the way. But I hear from people all the time where they'll tell me, I mean, just this week, I've talked to three different people. They all have the same story. They're on different continents. They don't know each other. They didn't get together and come up with this story, right? This is a common story that people have is... <clears throat> I paid this person for this. I paid that person for this. And, and, you know, my website's half done and my funnel's half done and my membership's over here. There's no sales, right? Like none of that matters. Like, so I tell people just sell it first. Decide number one, do you even like selling it? You know, do people want to buy it? It's not so much about will they buy it? It's like, can you get the offer in front of them? And can you, articulate in a way that they want to buy it. So for me, the magic sauce or secret sauce, if you will, is step one is sell it, focus on selling it, not building funnels and emails and automation, because that's just going to be a time suck. It's going to cost you money and it's not going to do anything to sell the product, right? The funnel is not going to sell anything. Like yeah. we, we've been sold in this, like you just need one funnel, right? But that's not true. You need an offer. That's what you need. So 100%. that percent. So that, that's the first secret sauce, I would say, sell it first. And I can share countless examples of how we've done that. And we're not that smart. So I can also share countless examples how we've not done it that way. But there, the data is clear. <laughs> one way we had success, one way we did not. So right. you, know, you, can, you can learn an hour, you know, call us back in a few months and tell us you learned it the hard way. No, 100% um, true. 100% true. The second data, honestly, is I'll go back to, you know, the Sonia story. So after we launched and we did 220,000 in 10 days, we took a little break. And I said, she came back and said, let's partner. And we said, well, let's just automate this thing. And we did it. We did the webinar and we automated it. And, but it wasn't working. After like 30 or 45 days, we'd done like 20 grand. And we're like, well, what's, like, what's going wrong? It's the same offer, same ads. And it was at that moment when I said, well, let's just put all the numbers on a sheet and let's just see it so we can all look at it and just get what's happening. And so we did that and we made some changes and the traffic team ran the traffic and we looked at what was happening in the funnel. We made some changes to the copy. And then we realized that automated webinar is not the same as just taking a live recording and putting it. And we started making changes. And within about 45 days, maybe 60, we had broke a hundred grand a month in that. So secret sauce was looking at the data and, and making the decisions. And we just ran it that way. Like, here's what's happening. No, that is, that is so true. We, we were exactly in that boat where we were, you know, cause we helped some people launch some courses and we were talking about a course 
And the worst thing that can happen is you sell one because then you have to do all the work for one or you can just give back or the refund. Money. Yeah. Right. You can give back the money. Right. So we started leaking. We were going to do something and we were like, okay, before we do the funnel, like we had no funnel, we had nothing. We just started talking about something we were going to do and we limited it to 10 spots because it was all a done for you type of product. And literally it sold out before we had a funnel. And then we're like, holy smokes, now we have to put it together. Like, oh my gosh, let's, now we have to get to work. Now we have to do it. And, and we delivered on it. But that's that's when you have to get to work when you fund it. And, and I think there's so many companies out there that kind of do this, but Elon Musk does this really well, like Cybertruck, right? So he, it's a $100 deposit. Everybody that wants a Cybertruck, I did not buy one. However, a lot of people did because that's how he funds it to actually mm -hmm. make the product. And if no one bought it, guess what? There would be zero cyber truck out there. Right. And right. Just, it, it's, it's so logical. And, you know, I think people get hung up on this, like selling it first is like somehow bad, but we do it all day in our life, right? Like when you buy a movie ticket, you don't, right? You go to the movie, like especially online. I used to go there and you'd buy the stand to go in, but now a lot of us buy the movie ticket online or a concert. How many times have you bought a concert ticket for a concert four months in advance? Yep. I used to be in real estate. Like there are a lot of developers that pre-sell their 30 story high rise before they build anything. I mean, so it happens. It's just an expectation, right? If you sell someone something and they expect it to be available right now, it's not, then you have a problem. So it's just, right. you know, I think it's, you know, common sense, but maybe people don't have so much common sense. So like you tell them, Hey, this is going to be available on this day, or I'm going to deliver it live on this day. And yeah. people are cool with it. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, one final question for me today, Drew, uh, and it's, it's definitely been a pleasure to get to know you. You speak our language. Yes. Uh, right. And, uh, so this is a super, uh, great, but if people look for you they, and they find drewburks.com uh, and you've got a, 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 you know, a super simple one page. Yeah. I don't even know what's there. Tell me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's a super simple, just one pager. And it says, are you ready to transform knowledge into profitable business? Right? Like it's doing exactly what you say, uh, you, you, what you're helping people to do, helping map out the strategy, work on the offer build everything right and then uh you know you, you've got some templates and stuff you can get and it's just you know email and you can send that that lead magnet so uh what what's kind of the you know thought behind some of that and um you know it's just what's what's the experience like for someone to, to work with you kind of through that that avenue well i'd like to think the experience is amazing and fantastic certainly um you know the best way for anyone to get in touch with me when they want like real up-to-date information is, is just to go to Facebook or Instagram or something like that, where they can just direct message me. And I say that because like I, I, I you know, said it and try to make it funny, but it's truth. I don't even know what's at that drewworks.com site anymore. I have a bunch of different sites and I'm always putting things up and throwing things up. I operate off of a done is better than doing. I operate off a, of, you know, imperfect, uh, action is better than perfect planning right these like cliches but so i just put things out and sometimes i even forget to take them down which has happened and, and you know i had a webinar maybe a year and a half i'd put a, a webinar up but i put it on a page at drewworks.com i think it was like drewworks.com slash partner or something like that i forgot it was there and one day my phone rang it was a lady saying hey i'm on your side just watch this webinar order form's not working. I want to sign up. And I was like, uh, what's the site again? Let me check it. And I had to go realize, look at it. And she was trying to send me $5,500 for an offer that I had never even really launched. I just taken this video, this webinar and put it up on this page. And I don't know how she found it. And so, you know, I was like, well, I should use that webinar probably if it's working. <laughs> She's probably using more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, so I, I, I like to put things up and test them, but the, you know, if someone really wants just to get in touch with me, they're like, Hey, it's, you know, whatever date it is, just DM me. I'm super easy to get in touch with. I'm accessible. Uh, I don't have a big team managing my profile. Like if you message me, I'm the one messaging you back. Uh, so that's one thing. 
but when it's what's like to, to work with me you know i told you I, i'd like to think it's great and amazing all this but it's really about just getting stuff done right it's about going if we're here and we want to be here what do the steps have to get done and we're not going to get it done perfectly it may not even be that pretty but we are going to get here and i always tell my clients day one like I'm going to be as committed to this project as you are and at times more. So you need to be okay with that. And you need to be okay with me holding you accountable because if you're not, this is not going to work out. And I don't want you to say yes now and in a week regret it. Um, so it's just, it's results oriented. And, you know, that's just that's what it's about. It's not being flashy. Just, we just want to get stuff done. So. No, I, I think again, you're speaking right to us. We talk about done beats perfect all the time because uh, if you're looking for perfection, it's probably never going to happen. Right. So just just get something done and understand if you're you know on the right path or not. So I know there's people out here that are listening and they're like, oh my gosh, I want to get involved. Do you have space or do you have things open or kind of where can they get involved and get into your world a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I would say, it, you know, if you're listening to this or watching this, wherever, wherever you might be at, if you are looking to create a premium offer, a high ticket offer, and you want to get it created, launched, and, and start selling in the next 30 days, then you should direct message me. Uh, yes, we have a group program. It runs 90 days. So there's room for people to come in, right? It's a scalable offer. So if you work with me, I'm going to encourage you to do the same type of thing. Um, but every week we have group coaching calls. We have co-working sessions, which are super fun. People come on Zoom like this and, you know, everyone's logged in and, and we're just there to get things done. That's what those co-work sessions are about. And then we also have one-to-one -one accountability and check-in uh, where it's just me and, and you to get on and, and work through. And again, the first phase is to get your premium offer created, launched, and sold. And then after that, it's about how do you take that, create your signature course or your group coaching program so you can start to scale. And then beyond that, it's really getting you, we have traffic coming in. So you have enough data to look at so you can scale at that point. So. Perfect. All right, Drew, definitely a blast. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I, I know I know everyone's going to get some value of, of this, uh, especially when we break it up into all the little micro content that we'll break it up. Into. I can't wait. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'm, I'm so looking forward to seeing, seeing what we get, seeing the gold nuggets that I know you dropped. So uh, appreciate your time today. Well, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Let me know if I can ever be of any help. All right. Thanks, Drew. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, Ron, another amazing conversation we just had with an incredible guest. Uh, I, I love what we do. First and foremost, I love being able to have these conversations. And, and I know like I started this conversation with Drew beforehand. And so it was a total shock to you. Right. When we came on. So uh, I, I don't know. I think that's fun. Just like uh, when we have Dale or someone else on the show, it's like, okay, I don't know who we're talking to, but let's go. Like, this right, right. So fun. So anyway, uh, besides that, a couple of takeaways, as always, I'm sure you have a few. Yeah. And I think it, one, he speaks our language so well, right? So one, just start taking small steps towards the goal you're trying to achieve. If you don't start taking small steps, you will never take any significant progress towards the goals you're trying to make, period, end of story, small steps, keep going. Uh, and then really understand what you're trying to do. So we talk about this all the time. If you're in it to make money, it needs to be deeper, right? So for us, it's, it's truly about that time freedom. And he mentioned that, right? So how do you achieve what you're trying to do? What's the systems you have to put into place to achieve what you're trying to do so you don't become stuck in fulfillment mode? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, that it's pretty crazy. So just to circle back on that a little bit, Ron, it, Drew, ha, he mentioned his four steps, right? And, and people can go to his Facebook group, Escape the Job Life, and they would find uh, some posts that he made two days ago, literally explaining this. But this, the four pieces the, is that he goes through, number one is the strategy, right? Like figuring out what your niche is, who you're serving, how your offer is, how you're delivering that offer, all that fun stuff. But then, then build it, right? Like build it and just 
done is done beats perfect. Just don't wait to just build as fast as possible. Launch it is the third step. And then you optimize and scale, right? Like, you know, so many people get stuck on the first thing where they, they get stuck on the building phase and they just never take the, the final step to launch. And so uh, done beats perfect, my friends. Done beats perfect. And uh, if you follow Drew's methods, strat- find the strategy, do the building, launch it and optimize. Like you, you won't fail if you're going through that, right? Like that's, it's just, I love those steps. I love that he talks about the done beats perfect. Cause you know, again, it speaks our language language where we're right there. We, we believe that wholeheartedly and, uh, and, and, you know, then you can track the data. Then you yeah. can see like, is it messed up in the first part where, where you built it or is it messed up in the offer? Cause you know, like you track the data. So anyway, super fun, super grateful that uh, we get to do what we do. And uh, for anybody out there, thank you for listening. Thanks guys. And again, go make an impact.